Welcome back. And if you're new, hi, my name is Alma Kane. And for this video, we're going to talk about 20 ways to find freelance writing jobs. Plus, I'm going to give you 10 bonus tips to help you become a freelance writer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Over on my blog, alnacane.com, 20 ways here is a blog post that I've updated. And I'm going to go through it to help you find 20 different ways to find freelance writing jobs if you're a complete beginner and you want to become a freelance writer. I'm going to just go over this blog post. The first way to start freelance writing is with cold pitching. Now, it is a bigger strategy than the other 19 ways I will show you, but I wanted to start with something like cold pitching because it can give you better jobs that pay more money than traditional methods that you will see around the internet. Cold pitching means that a business that you seek isn't actively hiring writers, but if you pitch them and you convince them that, you know, their blog isn't updated frequently, they don't send out monthly newsletters, you can be the writer for them because usually entrepreneurs, bloggers, small business owners aren't the best writers. They often hire out those tasks. You can definitely run a Google search to start finding a list of companies. So I just Googled beauty products companies list. If I wanted to be a beauty copywriter and write for beauty products, then I would type this in. So once you figure out a topic and it could be fun, have fun exploring just different items around your house, things that you use and you love. See if there are roundups of these companies or these lists and take note of them. Once you do find them, you need to start thinking of maybe narrowing down that type of client. So in the beauty niche here, I have cruelty-free beauty products, eco-friendly beauty products, or luxury beauty products. I would focus on one of those and then start really searching those types of companies. Once I find that, then I can find the right person to talk to, like the editor, content manager, or the owner, and then you send your cold pitch. You will not hear back from the one person you send a pitch to. It's gonna take probably 100 pitches before you hear back from someone. You could be lucky. I've had my course students right away to first 1K land a cold pitching job with their fifth pitch that they send. The second way is with job boards. Job boards are popular amongst freelance writers and other types of freelancers. And this is how I got my big break as a brand new freelance writer. So you can go to job boards like Pro Blogger, like Blogging Pro, and in my bonus tips, we'll go through those job boards. But here is a screenshot of what it would look like for a writer for the technical content. It's remote and it's part-time. This is perfect. As a freelance writer, you do want to pick remote jobs that you can work anywhere in the world. And I would do part-time so that you can have more than one client. You want to not be out in the streets, basically, if you put all your eggs into one client and they decide, you know what, I don't want to do blog writing. I want to do podcastings instead, or I'm just going to do videos and no more writing. You know, companies do that. And so they don't need you or they only need you to write four times a week, they'll just drop it down to four times a month or something like that. In the best interest as a brand new freelance writer to find freelance writing jobs, find more than one. Like I said, I was able to secure an 800 word blog post for $100 on a free job board site. I list them in this post. I'll definitely put a link to this post in the show notes. So make sure to check that out. Number three, follow tweets from job boards. This is an easy thing. Make sure you're on Twitter and start following Write Jobs, Who Pays Writers, and J Jobs tweets. They yield really nice job ads here that pay well. So it's in the best interest to just follow them. Super easy, super actionable. You can do it right now. The next tip is to use your website. Now this tip does require a bit more extension as far as days and a weekend, but it is possible. I do have a course called Writer Website in a Weekend. Exactly that over the weekend, you can take my course, and follow step-by-step. Step. You can also check out my step-by-step step tutorial on just starting a blog in this post. So you can just click on it. It is the first post on melnakane.com. I give you examples of students in Write Your Way to First 1K and what their sites look like. Here's Jessica's site, Wendy's site, Joan's site. Number five, this has been updated to having a business card. I've been noticing in writing communities that it's essential to have something like a business card to network locally. And it's an easy way to leap into freelance writing and be ready for potential writing gigs in your day-to-day -day life. So I would create 
business cards go to Staples or your local printing company, you know, get a stack of whatever the base is, 50, 100, of a professional looking business card. Have them handy and give them to small businesses like your grocery shop or when you head to the salon or at the bookstore. Just send them out because you don't know if that owner has a sister that owns a sporting goods store and needs, you know, a, a copywriter for their brochure. You don't know that. It's in the best interest to have a business card and as well, let others know about what you're doing if you want. When I first started freelance writing, I actually didn't tell anyone in my family at all. And I still haven't told my sister and that's okay. <laughs> you don't have to, I mean, if you don't want to tell your family that you're doing this, but you know, if they're okay, if you feel like that's a good step, then go for it. What I did is I met people in my community and focused on that. And I actually found one that is in my city. So I try to meet up with them regularly. Number six to finding a freelance writing job is to guest post. In my private Facebook group for Write Your Way to Your First 1K students, one student said that his guest post landed him a job and it was a guest post on my site, freelancerfaqs.com. You can guest post there. He wrote a post and a client saw that post and asked him for his rate. They accepted his rate and now he has a job with that company, which is awesome. He shared his first paid post in the group and it was amazing. I love, I was so happy for that. So guest post does really pay off. Guest posting means your writing is on someone else's site. You can definitely search for these places in Google by Googling your niche plus write for us. So parent blog plus write for us. You can do anything. I've, I've typed in tennis plus write for us, golf plus write for us, backpacks plus write for us. I mean, you can just type in and have fun one night and get a lot of good sites that you can guest post on to reflect your writing niche and your credibility in that industry. And what's great about guest posting sites is that you can draft an author bio that you can link to your, let's say, portfolio page if you don't have a writer website, a Facebook page, whatever it is so that people can click and know more about you and hire you. That's why I do really sort of preach having a writer website because it is your home online, it is your business card online, and it's highly professional. But I understand if you don't have one right, right away, that's okay. That is okay. Just link to a portfolio page or a Facebook page or Instagram, <laughs> somewhere where they can contact you. Number seven to finding a freelance writing job is to network with other freelancers. This is important. You will definitely find gigs this way. Follow other coaches, VAs, other writers, and you never know that writer might not be able to fulfill a writing job and pass it to you. So definitely, definitely, definitely go on Twitter, find other writers, go on Instagram, find other writers, freelancers. Number eight, I want you to start warm pitching. This is a long-term strategy, but it will yield better clients for you and ones that you want to work with. What this refers to is following brands that you like and interacting with them. So I give you an example here of interacting with an owner, a business owner, you're nurturing a relationship. I did this over Instagram. I, I think I was watching a live of this coach and it was really cool. And then they asked for if I could write their welcome email series. So it's things like that where it's simple as watching a live from someone like a coach or an author or a potential client of yours and then DMing them and saying that it was really cool and I really liked your live and maybe you had a question and then developing a relationship over the DM. A cool little trick that not many people know to land a freelance writing job as a beginner is to say you're for hire. I actually did this for many years and it was just recently within the last year or two that I, I took that off, but I had for, for hire on my writer website and on my author bios and on LinkedIn and on Twitter everywhere. And I realized, you know what, I'm, I'm beyond that right now. I've been doing this for seven years. So I, I, I'm gonna change that. But for brand new writers, this is a gold mine to mention you're for hire on your author bio, in on Twitter, on IG, anywhere, on your guest posts that you're for hire, okay? It's important because if you have that on LinkedIn, for example, other writers will notice that. And then if they can't fulfill a writing job, they will remember, oh yeah, there was that girl who, said that she was prior, I'm going to, you know, tell this p prospect to go with that person. Now, LinkedIn right now has a little badge that says open for work. So it's, it acts the same, but it doesn't hurt to put for hire because even as a Google search company 
owners might put writer for hire to find someone for hire. Number 10, to visit local printing and design companies. This is important. This is what I did right in the beginning. I drafted up a service list and I went to my local printing companies. I went to my newspaper as well. And so I was able to get some leads that way. Why not pitch your story? I have a link to a database for submissions of your story. You know, publications can pay you up to a dollar or more per word. So this is kind of nice for your story. Consider that if maybe you want to do fiction writing or you want to do some other form of writing, you can definitely share your story to build an audience because people want to learn about you, the author first. And so you can do it that way as well. You can Google search publication pay submission, magazine pay submission to get paid opportunities. All right, number 12, join Facebook groups. I list specific ones every year. I change these out so that, you know, people can have a new opportunities in these groups. So these are the ones for this year. Give them a go, sign up to them and be helpful. You know, if there are questions that you can answer, just be helpful so that people know, oh, you know, you're the copywriter. So you're answering a lot of questions about, you know, I'm, I'm having problems with their sales page or I'm having problems with an email sequence then you can add your two cents there. I wouldn't overly promote yourself and market yourself as the copywriter. They'll know how helpful you are in these groups and then they'll remember you. This has worked wonders and for many of my students in Write Your Way to Your First 1K. Get a referral. Now, this does mean you already have a client, but even if like, let's say your guest posting owner there, if, if it's a small blog, you can definitely ask and say, you know what, I'm open to some content writing do you know of anyone or do you need some content writing for your emails or a landing page? I'm open to that. You can also do that for a guest post if it's a small site. But this is what I've done in the past with an older client. I did reach out on Twitter and I was able to write. They found someone and I got the job easily. And it has generated me thousands of dollars from that one client. Number 14 is updated for my 20 ways to find freelance writing jobs. And this is journalism jobs. Now you can definitely try Cision jobs. They market more journalistic types of gigs, writing gigs. So check that out. I list two other ones here that also have writing gigs. We're actually going to try one of them, I think, in my bonus tips that I'm going to I'm going to share after this post. Number 15, pitch sites that pay writers. So just like pay submissions and you can also find sites that pay. So I have a link here of 30 sites that pay up to $700 a post. So there are sites like a guest posting site that pays. Definitely spend the time finding those sites. It's almost like having a real freelance writing job because you're getting paid for your writing. And that would feel wonderful that you get paid for that writing and you can use it as a writing sample and actually find other jobs that way because now you have proof that you can write. Number 16, search on LinkedIn jobs. I've been finding lots of luck finding LinkedIn jobs. They have a job board. You can definitely check that out. You can also check out certain companies, search a company, go to their company page and under their company page, they might have a job section. See if they're hiring. I do have a video, so make sure you check that out when you go to this post. Number 17, use a content agency. Many freelance writers start off this way by finding marketing agencies and content agencies to work for. Sometimes the pay isn't the greatest, but at least you get the experience and you know the expectations once you land a few clients with an agency. So I do list Word Candy because I do know Tom Ewer. He is a prolific writer and he's been around for many years. And so I do know that his company is credible, but there are many other types of smaller content agencies. In my course, Write Your Way to First 1K, I do list some boutique, I call them boutique content agencies there that not many people know. Number 18, use a directory. Now, some place like ProBlogger has a free candidate dashboard. Writer's Work has a marketplace dashboard there. There are places where you can list your information so that it's just another place to market your business. Number 19, why not use Reddit? Use the Hire a Writer section, go to that bookmark it and you might find a really good writing gig. Here's another one for hire and writing opportunities. So bookmark these ones here. All right. Number 20, wow your clients to make more money. As I mentioned, I have a contributor site. You can wow your clients with your guest posts like one of my students did recently and land a gig that way. Let's go into some 10 bonus tips for you. 10 bonus tips to help you become a freelance writer. Number one, it's possible to make a living from your words. According to ZipRecruiter, a freelance writer averages around $5,100 a month. And this is entirely achievable if you pick up multiple writing clients or land bigger writing projects. But for me, I was happy making a part-time writing income 
with high tier clients, such as ad hoc clients or SEO writing clients. But this year I increased my rates. So where a long form blog post is around $875. Now if this brand, let's say requests four posts a month for me, I can make $3,500 a month from just one client. And I would just need one or two clients and that would be it. Part-time work, easy peasy. Number two, pick a niche that clients desperately need writers for. Now to get started, you need to pick a writing niche that you enjoy writing about and that clients will pay money for. But to make it easy, I'm going to give you the niches that client desperately need writers for. Okay, are you ready? Remote working is huge right now. Education, finance, mental health, alternative health and motivation. Here is a snapshot of the traffic that is happening just for motivation traffic here. Over 200,000 searches. Software as a service. This is the niche that I write for. Beauty, exercise, food and recipe, online learning, gaming, relationships, IT and business. As you'll notice, there's a mix of entertainment kind of niches and business types of niches. This is what is popular right now and that need writers. Number three, create original research for your samples to wow prospects. Now this is something secret. I want pay attention. I want you to create three writing samples, blog, writing is highly versatile and most businesses know what a blog post is but now this is important to stand out amongst other freelance writers because there's going to be more freelancers that are coming into the workforce i want you to conduct original research so your content will become data driven and you can do this easily by creating a poll i recently created a poll in linkedin and i based on the results, I can write a writing sample called the weakest marketing skill entrepreneurs lack that could easily be solved. And then in parentheses, backed by original research, perfect writing sample. It says that it's backed by original research. I can pull this little case study and then talk about my results and then write my post. This is unique content. This is original content that I know potential clients would eat up. So if you can create your writing sample like that, you're going to land a freelance writing job easily. Now these samples can live on your blog under a portfolio page. Page, or you can use them as a guest post. Guest posts love original content. Medium is a free writing platform with magazines and publications you can write for. Here's a snapshot of my Medium profile. Number four, have the necessary items to start freelance writing. Now, before you start finding freelance writing clients, make sure you have the following. You have a professional email address. You have a PayPal business account. It's free to sign up. You want to make sure to set aside 20 to 30 percent of your income for taxes. You need a computer, a laptop and proper seating. You're going to be sitting for many hours a day. So make sure that you have proper sitting so you're not going to hurt your hands for hand pain and make sure to in develop exercise programs so that you're not sitting for too long during the day at times. I have a Fitbit, so it buzzes for me to get up and walk around. Optional, you can use a planner or management system like Trello to keep track of your work. I like to use a planner. This is a planner that I use. It's developed by Ashley Neris, who I know she actually did a expert training in my course, right your way to your first 1k. So she has a beautiful planner here. It's, it's streamlined and simple. And I like to use it to keep track of my work, my pitches and my clients. I'll make sure to put a link to my planner. It is in the notes of the video. Okay. Number five, use job boards. And here are my favorite ones. Pro Blogger, Writer's Work, Freelance Writing, Glassdoor, and Contena. And I'm going to go through those real quick for you. Here's Pro Blogger's job board. In blue, it shows brand new work right now, what's happening right now. And you can see there's health writing jobs, outdoor content, a lot of entertainment, home improvement, as you can see, gaming. These are, as you notice, the niches that clients need writers for, you can see them right here active. All right. So there are some really good entry level jobs. I mean, you're not going to find writing job that's going to pay you $300 a post, but you might find one that pays a hundred dollars a post. All right. It's a, it's a beginning and it's a start. Writer's work is a premium job board, but it's budget friendly. And I like how you can filter, you know, you can do part-time, I like part time. And then you can see there's hair science writer here, comedy writer, again, more definitely for TikTok videos. Like that's really cool. You can find this and it wasn't in pro blogger. And so you can see the entertainment niche is really booming right now. Partnership writer. I mean, there's so many in here that are really cool. And then business type, digital copywriter, grant writer. I mean, these are all really cool. Writer's work. Definitely give that a go. I do have a video of writer's work using it. So make sure to check that one out after this one. There's freelancewriting.com. They have writing jobs. So you can see what's available right now. Entry level ones. There's a junior copywriter, streaming culture. I mean, that's entertainment. So there's lots here. And then glass door. I just typed in content writer. So there's lots of content copywriters here. 
You can type in comedy writer and see what they have. IT writer. Glassdoor really is really cool. It has like journalism jobs, but also has copywriting jobs and other types of writing jobs. And then Contena is a premium job board. I wouldn't suggest getting this right off the bat. I would wait to try the other job boards, try to secure at least one client, and then I would invest in Contena because Contena is your long-term friend. You're going to find writing jobs from HubSpot and Facebook and big, big brands in all different niches. So this is just health. So there's some cool ones here. We can go to finance and just take a look here. Lots of jobs there. If we go to education, this one is 6,000 a month for education. Lots here, lots of companies that need writers. So Contena is a premium job board that I would wait a little bit until you have at least your first client. All right, number six, beware of red flags. You're going to probably come across these in job boards. If you see these, it's a potential red flag. A job that wants a free sample. You don't want to give them a free sample. You want to direct them to your portfolio with samples already there. These jobs want a sample based on their business and their niche so they can use it and not pay you. So do not fall for that. Job ads wanting you to write like Neil Patel or like John Moore or like whoever is big in your space that you want to write for. I wouldn't trust these jobs because the pay is very little. They want a lot for little money. All right, the company has no online presence. And granted, I know there are new new companies are starting every day, new startups, but I mean, at least they have to have a site and one social profile before they start hiring writers. So if they don't have anything, it could be a potential red flag. The writing job pays very little. Definitely, you're gonna have a bad client. I have a video on bad clients. And so you don't wanna work for very little at all. And if you do, for a very, very short time. The freelance writing job ad has poor grammar. It's low quality. I'd be careful if you see any grammar mistakes in the job ad, then it could potentially be a low paying job. The job ad has very little information. Again, you're gonna deal with clients that don't know what they want and so I wouldn't fall for that job ad. The client will pay you once you hit their metrics. They pay in page views, they pay in exposure. I wouldn't rely on your writing career on those types of writing jobs. It's fine if it's a guest post, but that's it. You know, as long as you deem it, that's a guest post and it's paid through page views, that's fine. But I'm going to look for freelance writing jobs with companies. And then the last one, they want you to Skype or download some kind of guide. I'd be wary of that. You know, most companies are using Zoom. So make sure that instead of Skype, say, hey, I'm on Zoom, let's do a Zoom call instead. Definitely don't download any guides. Don't do any of that stuff because it could be virus or something. All right, number seven, start networking with other writers and freelancers. I did go through that in the 20 ways to find freelance writing jobs. Some more tips, you can search SEO copywriter, health freelance writer on Instagram or Twitter. You can search for graphic designers, web developers, social media managers, and VAs. Those are the people that you want to associate with because they're going to have client work of themselves and they're going to have clients that need writing that they can't fulfill, especially like a social media manager or a VA or a web developer. Definitely follow them. I want you to introduce yourself and let them know you want to establish your network that you will pass work to them. You need to give them a reason to network with you that you know, you're hoping to have so much work that you can pass on to them or vice versa kind of thing. Number eight, always be marketing. Now I know there are writers that aren't on social media and they're doing fine. But with the pandemic and more and more people are freelancing, you have to stand out. People land freelance writing jobs on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Don't be left out. Get on social media and share your content. Connect with others and comment on other people's feeds. So I've been on LinkedIn more and more lately. And so I'm commenting on brands that I want to work for. So ClickFunnels is a software as a service business. I commented and they commented back. This is happening on Instagram as well. Number nine, keep on learning. Freelance writing is new to you. Finding freelance writing jobs is still new and it might be scary. I get it. I was the same. When I put myself out there, someone read my blog post and told me that my post was junk food writing. Writing that did not sustain you. Ouch, I almost quit right there and then. But after talking to my husband about it, he made me see that the person is nothing. They're nothing and just to move on. But I felt I was so new, I had to keep learning about social media, email marketing, lead generation, and things about my niche, as well as how to market my freelance writing business. It was a lot to take in. And to help you out, make sure you enroll in my free course, Get Paid to Write. It's on elnacane.com. It's the first thing you see. So I do want to help you. It's email course, super easy to learn that way. And I give you lots of help and tools that you need to land your first client. Number 10, give yourself some grace. Please don't beat yourself up if you try and try and try and you don't land a freelance writing job. 
Give yourself grace. If you are taking care of a family, going to school or have a full-time job or two, you won't have much time to dedicate to starting a freelance writing business. Now that's okay. You can start with only one hour a day. I have a video on this, so please watch this right now. And thank you. Tell me in the comments, did you enjoy this video? I'll see you in the next video.